Hi, hey, welcome everybody back to European Autocraft Studios episode, new episode here. Uh, we have our big, beautiful uh, coordinate field diagrams for the later 944s that we promised you. Uh, we want to go over just a little bit on the central electric board and then we're going to remove it from the car and then disassemble it. Uh, that's going to be fun. I did one a long, long time ago, so we'll work on this one together and see, uh, see what's inside. Pretty cool. Um, I just want to give you a quick overview of what's in there. If you look at the coordinate field diagram, uh, this is only of the fuse relay panel. This uh, central electric system, they call it a central electric board, central electric panel, they call it. Uh, and that's throughout all of the Porsche lines, they call it that. Um, if you look, this is everything that's in that board when you lift the cover. All the relays are labeled as G. Again, I don't know what the G stands for, but it's... Um, for us, it's a relay. Everything G is a relay. We uh, fresh air blower, flasher relay, DME relay. If you know um, the DME relay uh, causes a lot of problems, and the newer ones you get aren't really as good a quality unless you buy it right from Porsche, and it's a better quality relay. Sometimes the uh, solder joints break inside the board, and sometimes the relay coil itself stops working. So we've had a lot of problems with these. Uh, it's always good to keep a spare one in your glove box in case they get stuck on the side of the road. Uh, or a car that won't start. That's usually what causes it. Uh, bridge adapter, usually for the lighting. We're going to explore that later in the diagram. That has a lot of connection points that we'll explain. Uh, Ray wanted a fogger relay. Actually has a fuse test socket in the top of it. I don't know why, but I guess it just helps you find out if you got a bad fuse or not. Uh, headlight cleaner relay X. We talked about X. Um, instead of a position on your ignition switch, this actually has a relay to do the switching for you, uh, for the um, heavier loads. Uh, better to have a relay than to use a little contact inside the ignition switch. This has a lot more to turn off than the earlier car, so they use a relay. Fuses, wow. Tons of fuses. You can see our, um, our buses here. This one is um, 30. You know what 30 means from the last one. This is battery live all the time. Uh, our X line, which we just discussed with this X relay. We also have an E15, uh, 15E. That's an extra 15 uh, E relay. That will also turn off the consumers uh, while cranking. So I know this looks, looks pretty busy. There's a lot going on here with our, 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 all our designations, our abbreviations. All of these things we'll be explaining uh, in the near future. Maybe after this I'll go through and I'll show you a little about how they connect with other, other diagrams. We only have sheet two here. There's tons of them. Uh, we can go through a whole bunch of that later on, but right now we want to get back on the car um, and get some, get some parts off, uh, mainly the fuse relay panel. And uh, then we'll come back and maybe discuss a few things if we have time. If not, we'll do it in the next video with more of them. But um, that's it. A lot of stuff here, but there's a lot of information. Uh, just looking at it, everything means something, and I'll explain how you get around the diagrams uh, and the ground points. We have a nice little depiction of where all the ground points are. I'll show you those later. Uh, we can find some of those in the car if you want to see them. Well, even if you don't want to see them, you're going to see them. I'll show you those uh, since we have the car here. So let's get to it. We're going to get the fuse relay panel out and over to the bench and disassemble it. All right, here we are. Uh, fuse relay panel on the 944, the central electric board, the central electric panel, central electric system. Well, you get the idea. Anyways, let's see what's inside. Ah, a mess, as we expected, but I think we already saw this. Uh, DME relay. The DME relay wasn't plugged in. All this work and all we had to do is plug in the relay. Well, anyways, we're here now. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in here. We have one re, uh, one socket that's got some damage. I'll show you uh, when we get it out. Pretty easy to take out. There's just two thumb screws in the corners. Uh, if they're too tight, there is a Phillips uh, slot inside of it. Uh, plastic, though, so you have to be careful. But that's all there is to it. Uh, and we can lift it with these pins. There we go. Now, these are all the connectors uh, we saw on the outside of the central electric diagram. 
We want to take all these connectors off. They're all num uh, lettered and color coded. Uh, so we just pull the release. And now we have the task of taking, unplugging them, which can be tricky. Make sure that's out all the way. There we go. Now they'll come out. You can see all the different colors. Uh, and letters. Now here's something interesting. We have some insulation <coughs> coming off. So it looks like we're going to have some work to do here uh, on the harness. That's just one wire though, which is interesting. Oh, nope, there's another one. Oh yeah. Yeah, we could let the smoke out of this real easy. Luckily, you can buy smoke in a jar to put back in. That's just a British humor joke. Okay. Now we have... Um, do you remember in the early video, I showed you on the early cars, the H terminal. This is pretty much what this would be. I don't know if that's labeled H or not. Um, just 30, just labeled 30, which is fine. We're gonna take those off, and then we have to take out these uh, extra relay sockets. Porsche sells a really nice little relay, uh, relay remover. It's a pair of pliers with little corners square, like 90 degrees, that grab the relay right underneath and lift it out. I don't have a pair of those. And all the electrical work I do, I should have had a pair, but I never did get one. Okay, our battery is disconnected, so we can do this safely. I think everything is disconnected, so we can do this safely. Now we have this extra wire, which I don't like, and these uh, extra relay sockets that are added for different accessories. Um, let's see, those will come out from the bottom. I didn't mark these, but uh, by the wire color and um, our position, I'll be able to find them on the wiring diagram and know what position they go in. That won't be a problem. I should be using a smaller screwdriver too, but we can get them without damaging them. Oh, these are, these have some designation on them. Can't really read them, but that's okay. Now, as you saw, when I first started to pull this off, I kind of had a hard time. You got to make sure this is out all the way. Um, I didn't do that at first. So it can sometimes slip back in and you can see the locking mechanism, how the locking mechanism works. It just, it just takes this tab and just holds it in place. Um, but that's it, pretty simple. Uh, you can see all our connectors here, just floundering around in there. Since I did find some damage on this one, we're gonna, uh, on these wires, we're gonna go look at, look at some more later on when we get the harness out of the car. There'll be some repair work to do. But you'll be around for that too. So let's get over to the bench and take this apart. Uh, early in the other wiring diagrams, the um, current field diagrams, current track diagrams, I also mentioned in the later ones, they use a different numbering system for the connectors on the back of the uh, central electric board. Well here, uh, let's take connector E. If you look, we have connector E bracketed uh, pin 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then it goes 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Then 31, 32, as you can see. This isn't really pin 11. This is column one, pin one, column one, pin two, column two, pin three, and, and so on. 
So they use rows and columns for numbers. That's why you don't see any consecutive numbers here except they go up to five because there's only five rows, um, uh, five columns, I mean. So let's take a look on the back of the board. Um, here's our letter, our letter designation, D, E, F, G. So let's look at F. And you can see the columns here. This is column one, column two, column three, and column four. So this is column one, pin one, column two, pin, pin one, and so on. As you can see how they're numbered, there's a decimal between them to depict the uh, row and column. So that's how the numbering system works on these pins. Um, I don't know how many other cars use that system, but Porsche, the geniuses they are, came up with this amazing system to help identify uh, these connectors and pin locations instead of jumbling a whole bunch of numbers around, pin 32, 34, 45, 55, and all the way up. Even though those are there, you can find the column uh, and row that they're in. It's a, a much better system, I think, my, my opinion. So let's try to get this apart. We'll start by taking out all these crappy relays because even though they're Bosch relays, they're not for this car. They have the, you know, they have the mount on them. Um, I want to see this like it was new, so we'll deal with that. Uh, of course, the bridge, uh, interesting piece. Flasher. Here's our uh, the relay that has the fuse test in it. You just stick a fuse in there with the key on, it lights up. I don't know if it works. We'll have to look at the wiring diagram and see if this is live all the time uh, for for a test. I'll check that later. Flasher. Just Oh, look at the terminals on that. That's for some uh, a higher current, a higher current switch. And our chime. This is the doinger you hear. It goes bing, bing, bing. It's, it's a lot of fun with the door open while you're working on it. And our headlight control relay. We can discuss all that too in the future. Um, not headlight control. That's the relay for the blower motor, our blower fans, the cooling fans on the radiator. You saw on the fuse lid when I lifted it off, there's a little yellow, uh, little yellow tool in there, and that's for removing fuses. That's good for one or two fuses, and then it gets really cumbersome. This is easier. Now, since we have such amazing designation of where everything goes. I'm really not worried about fuse sizes. It's very possible that these are all wrong anyways. But, and I don't like the fact that they're not all going the same direction and it's not the same type of fuse. Some have big letters, uh, numbers, some have smaller numbers. Stuff just drives me crazy. So we'll get all the same fuses from the same manufacturer. As long as they're all the same going in the same direction, I'll be happy. I wish they were all the same color, then it would be kind of nice, but I'm not going to happen. I know my limitations. This is a mess, but we're going to clean it up real nice. You can see we have a burn terminal here. Um, we'll find out. We'll find out why, what happened there. Something definitely went awry. So with this off, it's kind of easy to see the numbers of the fuses, pretty simple. Our G, all our G designations, the G's are for the um, our relay designation. Again, I don't know what the G stands for. I'm sure it's something in German. Um, all right, let's get taking this apart. Wait till you see what's inside. Don't want to break any clips. If you're going to tackle this, make sure you have an area to work because a lot of stuff in there. But we have some dirty terminals and stuff. We want to clean all this up nice. There we go. 
I would say don't try this at home, but I kind of want you to. <laughs> All right. Layer one. the little fuse terminals. This one goes directly down through the board. Next layer. Now I know this looks scary, but if you look here, these are all cut out for the same thing. So this one will go right here. See how it sits in the board? I don't believe that there's two identical ones that would be wrong. Um, and each layer has that. So it's like a puzzle, but it's a lot easier than a puzzle. That one's stuck pretty good. Oh, see, that's our melted one. Here, that one's giving me a hard time. You can see it got hot too. So, I mean, you can't buy these individually. So whatever it is in there, we have to either fix it or take it from another fuse panel. Yeah, it got really hot. You can see it also uh, melted the plastic just a little bit here. It got hot and melted there. So... Know how that's going to come out of there. I'm sure the plastic melted right around it. So we might have to get a little aggressive with this because I want to get this thing apart. I'm not opposed to baking a new one of these if I can out of a piece of copper, but I would much rather fix what I have. Hmm, let me get a pair of pliers. Okay, these are a little better than the ones I had. So let's try this. Alright, we're we'll getting there. Alright. There it is. Yeah, it was it was stuck stuck in the plastic. But I think we can save this. Now, it may not have that same springy uh, capacity that it had before because it got overheated. Uh, I'll have to see what happens with this one when we go back together. Maybe we can save it. Maybe we'll have to make a new one from a piece of copper. All right, in the pile. So layer two. Now that we got that out of the way. Now see some of this corrosion, some of this corrosion here, although it's very, very light, it's probably not that bad, but if it was, if it was a little more built up here, uh, in the moisture with the rain humidity, or if this is just in a damp, if the car is damp or got wet inside and the moisture is in the car, this could become conductive and actually activate a relay, put a light on the dash, something like that. Um, so we want to make sure these stay nice and clean and we might add a little dielectric grease in here uh, on the terminals to prevent corrosion. Layer two. As you can see the same same little traces uh, with the little plastic bridge around them or a little protectant. So each one of these only fits in one place. Remember that 30 bus I was talking about? This is it. I think that's it. That's um, pretty impressive. I don't want to have to make that. But see, here's where our, uh, our battery leads come in, the ones that I unbolted. And this is all battery power, and it feeds everything it needs to, and even some go out the bottom for... Um, 30 power in the connectors. Me and another student in the electrical class with Porsche did this on a 968. I 
thought the instructor was going to kill us. He even had a fire extinguisher next to the car after we put it back together, just in case. <laughs> I don't know if he gave us an A or not. Probably not. You don't want to break this because this has all your information on it, your patterns, so we can reinstall these correctly. Layer three. As you can see, how long these terminals are, because they have to go through all those layers. On the first layers, they're kind of small. They just poke through one layer of plastic. But now, how long they are. And that tells you what layer they go in. So that's another clue as to how these go back together. Uh, not too bad. You can see we have some work to do on the cleanup. So this is going to make it really easy to clean this up and restore this, this panel. Not to mention the plastic. Look at that. You just gotta love that stuff. I'm sure this was designed by computers, but back in the 80s, I probably saw the tubes in it. And the brilliance behind it was pretty cool. So if one of you are brave enough to take your fuse relay panel apart, you might want to do it when we are doing the video of putting it back together. <laughs> that we can put it together together. Oh, there's another one that got hot. See the discoloration from it getting hot. That's black on top. We want to make sure these are nice and tight. Remember. I think I mentioned before that some people, uh, when you put the fuse in, they also, uh, if they add a radar detector or something, they'll put a, uh, a little tab inside here to tap off the power from the fuse. What that does, it spreads this open and you lose some uh, spring tension. So you go to sell the car, you take your parts out, you take your uh, connectors off, and then you just put the fuse back in and it's loose. So you may have power on one side uh, if this is say, if the if the battery side is over here, you'll have power on both, but it won't be getting down through here. It gets confusing. We've had that happen several times, so beware of that if you're having issues. Don't even if they have power at the fuse, you want to make sure you're getting it through the panel. If that makes sense. If not, I'm sure you'll tell me. Right. We are. Ready for the next layer. Oh yeah, see this one? Where it's all burned. It got hot here as well. Melted the plastic a little bit. These layers are lighter color for some reason. That I don't know why. Just gotta be patient with it. So if you go to the Porsche salvage yard, to get a fuse relay panel if you need one. Don't be afraid to get one that's a little crudded up. Maybe spend less money on it because it needs some work and clean it up yourself. Now we're getting some good stuff. Look at this. There's another, I don't know where these go yet, but there's a Some serious power distribution going on in here. Some of you would just say, screw it. Get a new fuse relay panel and not deal with it. But this is fun. Oh, here's one. Look at this. This is just a bridge from one relay. I'm sure there's others, or maybe I didn't catch it. Just from, what is that, here? From one relay to another terminal. All right. Next layer. Here's where we got hot. Melted this little plastic here. All salvageable. And see a nice little cutout, so we're gonna know where everything goes back. This is five. 
This is four. These are even numbered. Three. And two. Actually, I have them backwards in order here, but that's okay. All right, lots more. Still not done. <laughs> Another one that got hot. See the melted plastic? A lot of times that happens due to uh, like a blower motor that is on all the time. And they draw so much current. It doesn't blow the fuse because it's still within range. But when we have resistance like a slightly bad connection or just a lot of current passing through a tiny little area, it's going to get hot. So we always want to make sure our terminals are nice and tight. Good to have a nice tight terminal, always. I don't know how I'm going to clean these yet. I might throw them in the ultrasonic and see what they look like. Um, I don't want to discolor the copper or, or allow them to start corroding. So we've got to come up with something that will work. If you are brave enough to try this, I would just take lots of pictures. There we go. You can see the distortion from the heat. Or it did a little bit of damage there. And another layer. That's nice. Look at that. This is our this is our last layer. So. Any more cooked stuff? A little bit. A little bit. We're going to be making sure that all these connections are tight. All these little things are nice and tight and clean. That's another bus. I don't know what bus that is. Could be our e-bus or um, I don't think it's 15. I, it could be 15. We'll have to see. These are the guides for the fuses. I don't know why that one's stuck. I'm not going to force it. <laughs> yes, I am. No, that had a melted. That one must have been the one that got hot, too. That one that got hot. I can see there's some distortion here. Okay, well, we can fix that, too. Up. I want to say these are keyed, so the same type will have the same type of setting, same type of position. Like every one that has the same type of mount is the same. Like this one, some are on there pretty good. See, these are opposite uh, the way they mount, but they're the same. So the ones that are going left are like this, the ones that are to the right are this type. Then there's a different kinds. The larger one, this is for our larger relay, the one, the big high power relay. Um, that fits in there. Like that. Yeah. Another one here. These are all the same. This one is different as well, but it only go in one position because of the way they mount. They mount. So we're not too worried about these. Another one of those. Okay. Just goes another way. Okay. So no problem. Yeah, this is another one that got, uh, this is our relay, we'll take a look at this. I don't know if you can see it. There was some uh, plastic fusion down inside here. Uh, a little thermal plastic fusion. <laughs> Basically the plastic just melted together. So we'll try to get that out. 
Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's some carnage here. If if I find that one of these is not used for this application, I'll switch them. That's pretty mangled. I think we can clean it up, maybe even plastic weld it and then reshape it. But if I if I have a relay that's not used, I'm going to switch it so we have a nice clean uh, clean connector there. But we can clean up the inside of the board, uh, make that nice again. Clean up the top. I'll pull these out. Maybe throw this in the ultrasonic. These just unscrew through the plastic. And then you drop it. It's all part of the process. So that's it with this. Uh, we do have some more here. There's some more corrosion. Uh, we want to clean all this out. You can see it discolored the copper. So moisture definitely got in here. It can cause problems. These are just little bridges. More stuff. But the neat thing is, you'll see these in the fuse relay panel. You'll see a wire connector. In fact, let's just take a look real quick at this one. This is N and M. If I can see it, pins 1.5 to 4.5. Find connector N and M. Connector N and M. Where are you? M and M. Here's M. M15, basically, or it's M15. No, there's nothing there. That's A. M. 1.5 to N45. N45 is right next door. N45. So that's my jumper lead. Aren't I? probably can't see it that's okay but these jumpers are connecting to two connector housings two terminals in the connector housings M and N so it goes from one uh, row one column five to row four column five so M15 to N45 you go to N where's N and 4.5 to M15. So that's in the big picture, but in the fuse relay panel, it's just a little jumper. So pretty cool stuff. We'll get the rest of this part later. Uh, I think you've seen enough. These are all gonna be kind of stuck because the, they're just crammed in a small space, but you get the idea. And you can see when you go to put them back where they were, uh, just simple, simple stuff. There's your fuse relay panel. This is good for the 9, uh, 944, 85 and a half, all the way up through the 968 series. Uh, 968 has the same thing. Might be a little different internally, but it works the same. It's assembled the same. I know because I had one apart. <laughs> so I think that's it for this video. Uh, we can do more on the grounds. We'll show you where the grounds are in the next video and get a little deeper into these wiring diagrams and we'll find some of this stuff on the car and uh, we'll see you next week please subscribe like us all the time uh, each video and uh, just keep subscribing everybody subscribe over and over see how it works thanks